Decentralization is a key aspect of blockchain, but not all blockchains achieve decentralization in the same way. Despite the fact that they all share the same basic definition of what decentralization means. How a single entity achieves this is at the core of whether or not a blockchain is actually decentralized. Hey everyone, my name is Kui and I'm a professional structural engineer, but I'm also your everyday blockchain user and none of what I'm saying is actual professional advice. It's really just my experiences from the last five years of using blockchain. I've seen many people ask, is Coinos decentralized? If I say no, they'll just call it garbage and move on. But if I say it is decentralized, then they give some basic reason as to why it's not and the argument starts. I find that in most cases, it's because blockchains don't all achieve decentralization in the same way. And people often are lacking the necessary knowledge to answer that very question. Asking if a particular blockchain project is decentralized or not is also another way to ask how a 51% attack can be performed and to what effectiveness along with how a particular blockchain can protect itself against it. Now to recap, a 51% attack is when 51% of a blockchain security mechanism that's held by one malicious entity. It could be 51% of the hash power, such as the case of Bitcoin's proof of work, or 51% of the tokens, such as the case with proof of stake. But when it comes to proof of burn, the consensus algorithm on the Coinos blockchain, people aren't exactly sure how it works. I'll be making a video that specifically describes how Coinos Proof of Burn works after version 4 of the test comes out, which is supposed to come out in a couple of weeks. So please subscribe to get alerts for my new videos. Coinos does not use proof of work, so it doesn't secure the network like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Instead, Coinos uses tokens to secure the network using its proof of burn consensus algorithm. But it's not like proof of work or proof of stake. Proof of burn really blends the algorithms together in a best of both worlds approach which means that Coinos adopts characteristics from both algorithms. In a proof of stake system, blockchain developers are cautious to not distribute too many of their tokens too early because anyone who manages to acquire more than 51% of the token supply can actually take full control of the blockchain. Here are 100 quarters representing 100% of the token supply. 50% of the tokens are on each side. In this type of distribution, any side can perform a 51% attack by acquiring just 1% more than the other. This is why you often see proof of stake blockchains being touted as centralized. They cannot release their tokens all at once and they often rely on some time-based mechanism to distribute the tokens. Now, while the network can be designed as a decentralized system, this level of distribution prevents it from happening. If the tokens, on the other hand, were distributed into 10 different entities, for example, it becomes much harder to obtain 51%. On Coinos, 100% of the initial 100 million tokens were given away for free to anyone who was willing to mine for it. Coin tokens were also traded for two years on Uniswap by token holders, creating an as close to randomized distribution as possible. But because Coinos uses proof of burn, it has a unique safeguard against 51% attacks. It doesn't mean that 51% attacks are not possible on Coinos. They are always possible on any blockchain, and that's because people can always collude in the real world. It just means that blockchains must make it incredibly difficult to execute a 51% attack. So what is the safeguard that gets created when you blend proof of work and proof of stake? This is how it works. Earlier, I mentioned that Coinos needs tokens to secure the chain. This means that anyone who wishes to mine on Coinos must first have tokens. Now, Coinos miners must prove to the network that they are ready to mine by burning their coin tokens first. Burning tokens emulates proof of work's initial capital investment, where money is first spent on land, electricity, and hardware. Once a Coinos miner's tokens are burned, they'll need to fire up a node or maybe join a mining pool at the beginning, earning their tokens back with a 2% interest. But how does this safeguard against 51% attacks? If an attacker does somehow acquire 51% of the tokens, the only way they can initiate the attack is by burning the tokens first. So in order to carry out a 51% attack, you must first attack yourself. It is completely unreasonable that anyone would do this unless they were able to steal 51% of all the tokens. Now, the moment those tokens are burnt, the attacker is now committed to working with the blockchain to earn them back. And the length of time necessary to earn everything back is expected to be around one full year, making this attack very expensive to actually pull off. Now, it's possible that the earn back period is less than one year, but that doesn't inherently change how hard it is to actually acquire 51% of the tokens. 
Ultimately, any user can burn a supply and push that reward curve beyond one year. This would force the attacker to gain more from simply participating in the network security rather than trying to attack it. If you compare this safeguard to proof of work or proof of stake, you'll see that it's actually better. In a proof of work system like Bitcoin, performing the attack could potentially destroy all of the hard work that was involved in acquiring your miners and locating them in an area that's financially feasible to operate a mining farm. Now, the only way this attack would actually make sense is if the attacker was able to gain access to the miners for free. And they would also need to maintain control for at least 10 minutes or the time for one block to be produced. This is an incredibly difficult thing to actually achieve. Now in proof of stake, performing the attack may actually result in the loss of their stake. Again, this pretty much means that no one is ever going to buy their stake to attack the network. Instead, it's more likely the attacker would have stolen the tokens from an exchange or from an unsecured wallet, such as what happened to Solana recently. But even then, they weren't able to get away with enough tokens to attack the chain. In proof of burn, however, you have the same difficulty in acquiring 51% of the tokens like proof of stake, but you also need to burn your tokens before initiating the attack. So again, they must be stolen for the attack to actually make sense. This is why token distribution is extremely important. Now, the great thing about Coinos token distribution is that the token was mined and distributed over a two year period. And you pretty much have to be interested in supporting the project to hold any significant amount of coin. There wasn't a ninja mine performed by anyone or a secret developer stash hiding somewhere. All of this can pretty much be verified on chain and I'll leave a link to the address in the description below. But the question about how decentralized corners will be at launch is really a question of how hard it is to actually execute a 51% attack. And the answer to that question is that Coinos gains the protection from both proof of work and proof of stake, making it far better protected from 51% attacks than any other blockchain currently out there. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this very short video. Again, I make videos every week, so be sure to subscribe for updates.